Good afternoon. It depends on your location. I'm back once again with a word from the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's uh, pray. Give a word of prayer first. Father God, I want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMasiah. Glory be to God. I want to thank you. Amen and amen and amen. I want to thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for the Holy Spirit. I want to thank God for his holy angels. I want to thank God for his spiritual beings. I want to thank God and give honor to my spiritual father, apostle, bishop, Michael Wagura, first love Pentecostal in Nairobi, Kenya, and Pastor Rose, and all the pastors, ministers, uh, apostles, bishops, missionaries, deacons and whatever title you may hold and to the body of Christ and to First Love Pentecostal Church and I also want to give honor to uh, my family there my wife Sophie and I we love you and we say hello and we just love you so much amen and amen and we uh, like to say hello and we give honor to our family here in Charlotte, North Carolina and the U.S. of A. Amen and amen and amen. Today we like to talk about with the aid of the Holy Spirit uh, in Matthew chapter 13 verse 1 through 23 and then we will do some golden nuggets and whatever the Lord or the Holy Spirit will lead us to do and we want to talk about the parable of the sower the parable of the sower before that also the name of this church is Speak the Word Only Ministry. Speak the Word Only Ministry. And I am Prophet R.D. Stinson. Prophet R.D. Stinson. A child of God. Hallelujah. A son of God. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to God. The parable of the sower. Hallelujah. The parable of the sower. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, starting with the first verse. The same day, the day the teaching was given as recorded in the previous chapter, went Jesus out of the house, probably Peter house, and sat by the seaside, the Sea of Galilee, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. They wanted him to teach them, which he did. They wanted him to teach them, which he did. So they so that he went into a ship and sat, which was the custom then regarding setting 
while one taught. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables. A comparison illustration used in order to explain a truth. Uh, Jesus spoke many parables in the day. Concern uh, illustration with which all would have been familiar. Verse 4. And when he sowed some seed, word of God fell by the wayside. And the fowls, the demon spirits, if you will, came and devote them up. And verse 5, some seeds fell about upon stony places, for they had not much earth, and full with they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth, no depth. Putting the word out there, the devil liked to come immediately and take the word away. You heard me. Listen to the book. I'm in the book. Verse 6. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Because of having no depth, persecution soon caused them to fall by the wayside. All of this pertain to the a uh, presentation of the gospel and as obvious completely uh, refute the unscriptural doctrine of unconditional eternal security. You know something? You will have trials and tribulations. I'm in verse 6. Does Persecution, when persecution come your way, does you st stop coming to church or stop doing what the Lord would have you to do? People teach, some people teach, once saved, always saved. You know, Jesus say he married to the backslide. The scripture says that the, God is married to the backslider. Remember that? Yeah, you say always, if you want to stay saved, you, you, you say it's a condition. You heard me say that before. It's a condition. If, Jesus said that many times too, if you be willing, if you, God doesn't make you do anything. It's up to you. Don't you know that? Think about it. He said, I stand at the door and knock. What's that? Revelation 3 and 20. I, he stand at the door and knock. If any man here and let him come in. He doesn't bust the door down. Okay, verse 7. And some seeds fell among thrones, and the thorns, thrones, uh, uh, it sprung up and choked them. Other things were allowed to come in and hinder the growth of the word in the heart. Satan is watching. As soon as he hear that word come into your heart, he come immediately. Even if he have to use family members or friend, or household member, whatever he have to use, and he know what to use. I've been there. And he loved to use it on uh, baby Christians. And some of you are baby Christians when you should be teachers of the word, you still uh, are helping someone to teach you. I told you that before. I love you. I'm just telling the truth. Somebody got to tell the truth. Because, you know, today, they don't want to tell the truth. 
Okay. I'm in the book. Listen to verse 8. But other seed fell into good ground. Now that's the kind of ground we want. Is the good ground. Listen to the book. Receptive ground. That means to receive. Watch this. And brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold. Some sixtyfold. And some thirtyfold. In John 15, 1 through 8. Meditate on John 15, 1 through 8. Look at verse 9. Who have ear to hear, let him hear. Spiritual ear, let him hear. What the word of God is telling you. Whoever here is responsible to hear, it is to obey and will be so judged. The secrets of this first parable is that only about one-fourth of the expense effort succeed and three-fourths fail. Subsequent history demonstrate the accuracy of this prophecy. Did you hear that? Listen to the book. Listen to it now. Verse, th verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Seems to proclaim to a latter time when they were alone. Why do you speak to them in parables? This portray consideration on their part. Watch this. Why do you speak to them in parables? Verse 11. He answered and said unto them concerning the Lord method of dealing with two different classes of people those who really want to know God way you heard what I said and those who were merely curious see some people don't really want to know because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given Two categories are present here. It, in which category are you? Did you hear that? I say, which category are you in? Watch verse 12. We're talking about the parable of the sower. Which seed are you receiving good ground? Or yours is falling on stony ground? Or some other kind of ground and the demons are coming and eating it up. You heard me right. Verse 12. For whosoever has and want more to him shall be given. Now that's who have now. And he shall and he shall hell more abundantly. Did you hear that? But you don't normally hear that, do you? You normally hear those that have not prayed that they have. That ain't what he said. Say, I'm telling you the truth. We need to hear the truth today and not a fairy tale. That ain't what he said. He said in verse 12, For whosoever has and want more to him shall be given and he shall have more abundantly if one will righteousness the Lord will give him more righteousness did you hear that but whosoever has not 
it be taken away from him. For him shall be taken away, even that what he has, will be taken away from him. Did you hear that? He's not only lose what he could have had, but even that which he had. Did you hear that? Look at verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, in order to separate those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for those who don't. He say those who thirst for hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Remember him saying that? You remember that? Because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. That is, they do not wish to see or hear or understand. And hence, by a just judgment, they lose their trivial moral ability. They don't want to know. Listen, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which say, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Watch this, a will for deafness, a will for blindness, a will for dullness. This passage is quoted in one form or another some seven times in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 13, 14 through 15, and Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 12, and Luke chapter 8, verse 10, and John chapter 12, verse 39 to 40, in Acts chapter 28, verse 26 to 27, and Romans chapter 11, verses 8. Verse 15, For the people hard is wax gross. This is the reason for their spiritual dullness, and therefore rejection of Christ. Spiritual rejection or accepted being in their heart. And their ears are dull of hearing. They have heard and heard and little act on what they hear. And the Holy Spirit pull back until they lose even that which they had. And their eyes they have closed deliberately did so. Even in the face of irrefutability. Uh, ability. Proof. Listen. At least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. Did you hear that? And I should heal them. Listen to this. They will not turn to him, to the Lord Jesus. Had they done so, he would most certainly have healed them morally and spiritually. This speaks of those who have accepted the Lord, but for very reasons will fall by the wayside, as stated. This completely refutes the unscriptural doctrine of unconditional eternal security. You ain't saved forever and ever unless you stay saved. You can backslide. You can go back out in that world if you want to. See, nothing's stopping me from going back out into the world and doing all that foolish stuff and, and getting high and acting a fool and smoking dope and doing all that old foolishness. But I will not to do that foolishness because I don't want to do it. And then I have the Holy Spirit and I'm relying on the Holy Spirit. 
I'm relying on the blood. I'm relying on the cross. And I'm relying on the nine fruits of the spirit, if you will. And then I'm studying the word. Glory to glory. Face to face. Huh? You grow in this thing. And you got to be willing. You got to be willing. If you're not willing. Hallelujah. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes for they see. And your ears for they hear. This is the group who desire to know the Lord in a even greater way. I'm in that group. Are you? Verse 17. For verily I say unto you, single a very important statement, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. That's which Christ present to Israel, but which were rejected and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them contrast where the many who desire to see hear and to understand we talking about the par parable of the sower verse 18 hear ye therefore the parable of the sower christ will now explain it amen when anyone hears the word of the kingdom refer to the word of God, it speaks of God way versus Satan way and understand it not, does not refer to one who is incapable of understanding, but instead to one who has no desire to understand. Then cometh the wicked one. Jesus compares Satan to a vulture. And catch away that which was sown in his heart. Refer to Satan being allowed to do such a thing by the individual involved. The initial, the initial uh, does not lie with the Lord or with Satan, but with the person. It lies with the person. No one has any excuse. God is a just God. <clears throat> they say, well, what if he's out in the boondock and he doesn't hear the word? God meets people in their dreams. Have you been hearing that? God been coming to the, uh, Muslims and, and, and people in their dreams and letting them know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. God is a just God. You heard me right. I say he's a just God. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. The word wayside referred to the fact that the individual doesn't give its credence. It is unbelief. That's the problem. Unbelief. You got belief and unbelief and trust. Rely on him. Verse 20. But he who received the seed, the word of God, into stony places, referred to the second group. The same is he who hear the word and uh, anon immediately with joy receive it. They make a good start, but then fall by the wayside. Yet has he not root in himself, referred to the stony places, but endure for a while. He hear the word of God. He believe it. And he accepted Christ. It is all done with joy. But then something else happened. What happens? For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word. That's what happened. Tribulation and persecution. Which it definitely will. You're going to have uh, uh, tribulation and persecution. You got to stand. And, have an, and after all you do, stand there for. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. 
By and by, immediately, he is offended. Don't be offended. The offense of the cross, Galatians 5, 11. And he also who received, received seed, the word of God, among the throne, thrones, is he who hear the word, he received the word, the soul is, uh, uh, um, is futile and good with plenty depth. And the cares of this world, the uh, ways of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, deceitful simply because the uh, uh, acquiring of such make a person believe erroneous things. He choked the word and stopped it grow and he become unfruitful. Such a one is ultimate loss. John 15, 2 and 6. He started doing what the world do. Ah, he ain't mean that a little bit of this and a little bit of that won't hurt you. Uh-huh. Going straight to hell. And God doesn't send you to hell. You do unbelief. Verse 23 but he who received seed into the good ground, listen to the good ground, prepare ground, ground plowed up by the spirit of conviction because of sin, is he who hear the word, does so with eagerness, his excitement, huh, huh? he takes on the word and understand it. He wants to understand. And the Lord rewards such by giving more understanding, which also bear fruit, Christian growth, and bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. The idea is one hundredfold, the Holy Spirit scribe to bring the thirtyfold and the sixtyfold up to a hundredfold. St. John 15, 1 through 8. Study and meditate on it. Hallelujah. Let's go to some golden nuggets, if you will. Matthews uh, 17 and 5. Matthew 17 and 5. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. This was a demonstration of the Shekinah, and that should be glory, a token of the presence of the Most High, which had appeared over the tabernacle in the wilderness, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, the cloud overshadowed them, was a full view of the work of the Holy Spirit, and after the day of Pentecost, in glorifying Christ in St. John 16, 14, which say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We have here the Trinity, the voice out of the cloud, which was the Father, Jesus, standing in the radiance light, and the Holy Spirit present with the overshadowing cloud. Hear ye Him, hear Him alone. Everything comes through Christ and what Christ did at the cross. The Holy Spirit works accordingly. Romans 8 verse 2. Hear the word. Shout about it somebody. Isaiah 51 and 2. Listen to the book. I hope you praying for me and with me. Listen to the book. The parable of the sower. Amen. Hearken to me, you who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord, look unto the rock which you are shown, and to the hole of the pit which you are digged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that ain't the one I want to give you. I gave you an extra one. This is the one I want you to really have. Isaiah 50, 51 and 2. Look unto Abraham. Listen to the book. Look unto Abraham your father. 
This is an example. Listen one more time. Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Shout about it, somebody. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Verse 1. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell therein. Look at verse 6. This is the generation of them who seek him, who seek your face, O Jacob. And you know God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Come on, listen to the book. Okay, let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1. Chapter 1. Golden nuggets, if you will. Daniel chapter 1. Verse uh, 8 and 9. Listen to the book. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of with the portions of the king meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requests of the priest prince. I mean he requests of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defy himself the phase but daniel purpose in his heart mean that he was resultantly determined whatever the price that would have to be paid in other words he stood ready to give up his life before he would di disobey the lord it, if that what uh was demanded Now, God have, verse 9, Now God have brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the unit. Men rule, but God overrule. Shout about it, somebody. Glory be to God. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Four, chapter four, verse seven. But we have this vessel, the light of the gospel, in earthly vessels, man in never more than an earthly vessel, framed and humble, that the excellency of the power uh, may be of God and not in us. Salvation and victorious living come to us entirely by and through what Christ did on the cross. It is all of Christ and none of us. 
Shout about it, somebody. Glory be to God. Okay. Let me see. See what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Judges 14. Golden Nuggets, Judges 14. Fourteen. Sucks. Re, re, suck, sucks. Tense. Re, sucks. Tense. Okay. Judges, chapter fourteen, verse fourteen. And he, this is Samson, and he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound on the riddle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In effect, he was telling the uh, Philistines that the Spirit of the Lord had already begun to come upon him, which began with the killing of the lion, uh, which was a type of Satan and the Philistine, the resistance of uh, honey, was the sweetness that would come forth from this great, Deliverer. However, the Philistine, of course, had no idea as to what it meant. <laughs> he was given rebels, Samson, and he took the uh, sweet, sweet honey back and gave to his family to eat. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's, uh, hallelujah, let's pray. Pray, uh, let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you save the unsaved to the uttermost. Lord God, I believe that you sent Jesus Christ here on the earth plain. And he died out on the cross, you know, the old rugged tree, and uh, he took our place for our sins. And whosoever believe, we have eternal life. And we and I believe that if uh, we ask him to come into our life and uh, be our Lord and Savior, we become born again. And I believe, Lord God, according to Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 and verse 13 if you will uh, and we become born again and then in Acts chapter 19 verse 1 through 7 will be filled with the precious Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with tongues and for the ones that uh, already received uh, we be refilled and for the ones that want to receive we ask you to fill us Lord God in the name of Jesus Lord God I believe in miracle signs and wonders 
I believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory be to God. I believe in miracles, signs, and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. I believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory be to God. Uh, I believe in the totality of the Word of God. I believe in the totality of the Word of God. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father. I believe uh, uh, that God is a good God. And I believe that God wants to save us to the uttermost. Hallelujah. And I believe that he's a great God. Glory be to God. And he loves us. Hallelujah. And he wants to heal us tonight. Or today. So Lord God, everyone that stand in the presence of healing. Heal, Lord God. Heal in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast out every spirit that's not of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Until the next time. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, amen.